Good afternoon, Professor Dr. Munar Purohit, Dean and OHOD, Department of Law, Balkatullah University, Bhopal. Professor Anand Shankar Singh, Principal, Ishwasaran PG College. Mr. Gaurav Gulati, Founder and Managing Director, Joy Funnel Group, a unit of Arjundas Gulati Memorial Society. I, Gauri Gulati, welcome you all to the day seven of 15 days online refresher course organized by Ishwasaran PG College, University of Allahabad in collaboration with Droit Pinal Group, a unit of Arjundas Gulati Memorial Society. For the seventh session today, we have Professor Dr. Mona Purohit, Dean and HOD, Department of Law, Barkutullah University, Bhopal. Professor Dr. Mona Purohit is a seasoned academician with over 20 plus years of experience, teaching experience in legal teaching. She is presently Dean Law and the head of department of the Department of Legal Studies and Research, Barkutullah University, Bhopal. She has to her credit two books and one highly acclaimed on legal education and research methodology. She has over 18 papers apart from over 10 edited chapters to her credit. She has presented papers in various reputed international and national seminars and workshops. She has been a regular invitee speaker over the issues of PCPNDT, that is preconception and prenatal diagnostics, women issues, IPR, human rights, and legal research. Her NLD topic revolves around the patenting of biotechnological products and the conflicting issues in reference to pharmaceutical products. She has been on the panel of various governmental and non-governmental bodies, some primarily includes SSB, State Administrative Academy, etc., along with various universities and colleges. She has a rich experience of research and around 15 scholars have completed their PhD under her able guidance. She is also member of the board of studies of some renowned universities. She even features on the Doordarshan talk show and radio programs on legal issues. Professor Purohit has been facilitated with the prestigious Seva Samman, Shiksha Ratan Puraskar and Best Teacher Award twice in her academic journey so far. A multifaceted, dynamic and an academician par excellence, Professor Purohit with her God-gifted talent and seamless guidance has earned a prestigious name in legal fraternity, not only in Central India, but across the country. Ma'am, we are really honored to have you with us. Now, I would request Ma'am to proceed with the session. The topic for today is teaching pedagogy of uncodified laws. Thank you. Thank you, Gauri, for this wonderful presentation of mine. A very warm good afternoon to all the participants. Am I audible, Gauri? Yes, ma'am. Am I audible, sir? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. You're audible, ma'am. Thank you. So at the outset, I would like to thank the organizers for giving me such a wonderful opportunity to share my views with this August together. As the topic of my presentation is already given by Gauri, she has introduced on which topic I am going to give the presentation. So this is the my presentation, I would like to start with this presentation and sharing my PPT. Maybe you are able to see this PPT. Is it visible? Uh, yes, ma'am. It's visible. Yes, ma'am. Okay. It's visible. Okay. Thank you so much. So, as the topic of my presentation is teaching pedagogy of uncodified law, the most difficult task. One, the teaching pedagogy and second, the uncodified law. I can say, organizer gave me the toughest work to do. This is the biggest challenge before me to explain with this three T forms. These are the three or triple T 
which I can say is difficult to explain. This is first T denotes the teaching of teaching methods to the teachers. Just imagine. I am going to, I am supposed to discuss the teaching methods to the teachers who are very well versed with the teaching methodology and everything. But uh, I can say that one hope is there and that hope that he who dares to teach must never cease to learn and hoping that all the participants who are participating in this uh, particular FDP they are ready to learn something new every day and with this hope I would like to start my presentation but I would also like to say that I cannot teach you anything but surely I can only make you to think how to teach that I can just try to make you think that what is the lacuna what are the pitfalls which we are we would like to deal with Education is not the learning of facts, but it is a training of mind to think and my work is just going to let you know how to think right before going to the class. How you prepare yourself. This is what I am going to discuss today. And of course, that is the Albert Einstein saying that it is always valid. First, not learn of facts law normally people think that law is bulking there are a number of laws bulk of laws are there we are not supposed to discuss the facts because whenever you are going to the court you have seen that generally advocate will show you the book they will prefer or they will refer the book to the judges that this is the paragraph it means you need not to memorize everything or remember everything what you need you have to think that what is useful for this particular case law and how to apply that case law. So your thinking, your brain is what needs to be uh, prepared for the teaching. So whenever the teacher is trying to teach someone, he or she should keep in the mind that he is not supposed to discuss the facts and just to give them the data that that much of the law is there, 500, 11 section in IPC. No, that is not how to apply your mind in particular given situation. And I think that is the job of every teacher. As our topic is relating to pedagogy of teaching. First of all, I would like to draw your attention towards this particular phrase, andragogy. Normally, law teaching starts after graduation. Maybe you are having one integrated course, that is BLLB, BCom, LLB. And, but law subjects are supposed to be teach after that graduation for first two years for general introduction of your sociology, maybe economic and other subjects art subjects or BSc if it is science subjects. But after that only you are supposed to discuss what law subjects. Pedagogy is normally for the school teaching and the first stage of primitive stage of higher education. But as I am saying law is a foremost upgraded model. You can say it is like a PG teaching model. So here the term normally people, the normally jurist says that it is the teaching methodology of law should be andragogy rather than using the word pedagogy. So what is the difference between two andragogy and the pedagogy? Andragogy talks about the specific theories for the adult learning. Why the adult learning? Here I'm not talking about the old person, old age person. Here adult learning means and for a person who is having experience, who is supposed to apply the law, right? So, andragogy requires the application of the law, the experience which can be used in their particular life, lifelong. So, this is what the requirement where we want that law teaching should be referred as andragogy rather than pedagogy, but yes. Normally, we use the pedagogy in teaching, so I am continuing with this particular word. What is pedagogy? 
it is a science as well as it an art of teaching it is you can say philosophy a systematic way to teach and second part if you are going to see that talks about the tools so pedagogy is also referring the tools in the hands of the teacher how can they teach so this these are the two interaction between how it pedagogy also refer interaction between teacher and the student second the learning environment and third the learning task including these all we can say we are using pedagogy just the difference between the we know all of we are already did our phd in subject and the difference between methodology and the methods is the same pedagogy and the methods of teaching so pedagogy you can say it it is a methodology complete science from starting to the end object of the learning their evaluation process their result everything will be included in the pedagogy so this is what the pedagogy means it also includes the instructional approaches in a particular classroom and education is more general term where is the pedagogy is now a delivered knowledge with the successful and fruitful way if you are saying i am just giving you the education someone to it will not say that there is a very scientific method adopted by the teachers to get with the objective or having one particular objective so if you are having particular objective you want to give successful education to the person then you must know what is the pedagogy means this is the process of pedagogy obviously we are talking about pedagogy of the teaching so i am just discussing that only the first stage of pedagogy because the stages and the process of pedagogies are different as per the science as per the social science as per the subject you can say right and as per the teaching modules that can be different but this is a broader process i can identify that these are the pedagogical process first is the preparation of the content it means preparation of the content will include your curriculum preparation how you are preparing your curriculum for example you are teaching same subject in ug same subject in pg and same subject in your phd researcher so your content will be differ for example you are teaching research methodology if you are going to teach that same research methodology to the student of graduation courses then your methodology will be your content of the curriculum will be different if you are going to apply that into the pg course your content should be different and if it is for the uh, phd course your content has to be different so these are the ways and this preparation of content this prepare, uh, content or curriculum which i am saying it should be according to the learner so we can say this is the learner perspective second process process how to present or deliver content to the learners you have already prepared contents now it is a method which you want to learn law of learning actually it is not the law of teaching and saying this is law of learning because when you are trying to this is the starting this is the methods which we are going to discuss in teaching this is the previous you can say one step before this this thing what you should suppose to discuss law of the learning there are various laws bloom's taxonomy and all I, which i am going to discuss later on so how to present or deliver the content to the learners obviously with the particular objective what is the objective what is your goal to achieve here if it is a competitive exam which kind of uh, learning objectives right not the methods of teaching i am talking about the learning that i am going to discuss in that the third process of pedagogy pedagogy includes connects with the assets need of the delivers delivery of the content it means we are talking about the preparation of your tools and resources maybe you are using here you are using uh, online so your resources will be totally different if you are in a classroom with the chalk and duster your tools will be something different so which kind of tools and resources you are having for the class it has to be checked after seeing all these things one person will go to the uh, testing you can say 
clicking on the methods, testing method, which method will be appropriate for their teaching. So pull together these assets, these assets, right? According to these assets, you are not having clinical classroom. You are not having that kind of facility where you can provide the clinical teaching to someone. So what can be done? So according to your tools and resources, methods should be decided. Whether you are going for the discussion method, whether you are going for the uh, presentation or case law, everybody knows about these all methods. So that's why I'm saying, just giving you example, your method will be according to the uh, psychological cognitive based learning process. Means the combination of these three will include this method. So according to the learning objective, one person should change the methods. Next, the evaluation and the examination. Yes, the complete teaching is not normally included this, but pedagogy of the teaching include the evaluation process of the learning, working properly or not. You have to test here what you taught. That's why normally you go for the feedback forms of the student or the learning outcomes. Right? Nowadays, we are going to fill this. What is the learning outcome of the course? And the, this is what we required under the pedagogy. So teacher, when having these objective in mind, start with this preparation and again come back to the next content because if that teacher uh, feel that the objective which was uh, is in his mind at the time of starting of his module and now she want or he wants to change the content according to the situation so again there will be a change maybe it will take another time there will be a you can say one just a exemplary mod module you can apply and after that after two or three this thing or after taking the experience from other institution you can change your objective and the module so this is the complete pedagogy process include Teaching pedagogy strategies, I, I would like to say, saying it methods, we would say that it is a strategy. Why I am saying that teaching pedagogy is more about strategy rather than the methods, because teaching, how teaching is different from pedagogy, general strategies. Teaching is a purposeful activity and it influences the thinking and habit of the others. How a strategy will change that. And it is sim systematic process, right? We want to uh, impart the knowledge by a systematic process and create the skill with the objective of the education. So these are the object of the teachings that purposeful activity will be and there will be a systematic process for imparting of the knowledge. But as I said, it is more about the strategies. We are not the being a teacher we are not see the methods only we should see whether our strategies are right or not so how strategies are different with the method when we are achieve some objective with any method then it becomes strategy right so whenever teacher is going to teach i think he has or she has one particular objective one objective or goal which they would like to achieve so whenever method is combined with the objective it is always the strategy how much time you are having how much course you have to complete everything then it is a strategic strategical full work is required second strategy is always directional and comprehensive model direction means first maybe in jurisprudence you are having uh, three different areas, right? One part is about the school, second part is about the uh, sources, and third part is context. And this is the normal format which you will see in the uh, book of jurisprudence, right? But the teacher is supposed to teach first the concepts. Why it is required? Because if you are going to teach them that the Austin theory of right is this, in the schools, that is a very philosophical thing. Normally, it is not easy for students to understand that kind of philosophy. So if you have already explained them that, that this is the right, what is the right, what is the duty concept about, and then if you're saying that Austin says rights are the claims, 
then it is very easy for the student to understand that yes this is the right and right is same the uh, you can say synonyms used by the austin for the right is a claims so it is very easy same with that you have to first teach them the concept of the state if here you are showing that state the law of the state then they will going to uh, it is difficult for them to understand that so this is the directional things and comprehensive things you have to see that and then you should that could be in the strategy rather than methods so whenever we are talking about pedagogy we are actually talking about the strategy which should be taken care by a teacher a strategy another reason why i am saying it is a science than the art right it is not mere an arts the philosophical model it is a very systematic just the difference between the search and the research that is what the we are right if you are lost your keys and you are searching for that keys there is no system although you are searching something but what is missing a scientific systematic way of searching if there is a scientific and systematic way then that of searching is converted into research that kind of science a systematic way with an object is the strategy so always go with this that you should have a vision or the mission for your teaching methodology that is what the strategy and the pedagogy required a strategy is a combination of different method again you cannot say this method of teaching is good for all so whenever teacher is trying to start is going to start with some course material and they are starting teaching they must see which combination of methods are good for them so they will make the strategy for this particular chapter i am going to use this method of teaching for this topic i am going to use the textbook style method of teaching for this i am going to use the question answer and these are the separate models so you have to keep in mind that you should first prepare your strategy then should start with this so that requires a preparation a lot of preparation that is what the teaching pedagogy need next is the learning outcome of law education because mostly we are going to discuss only the uncodified laws but before coming to un teaching methodology of uncodified law it is very important in general what are the learning outcomes because this is what we are missing normally law schools miss this particular area if you are going to see the iits in any other school they have learning outcomes they decide first learning outcome then they start the work so uh, after seeing this that is what the scientific and systematic method or strategy requires so this is the law school what is required the idea normally what law schools do they have ideal con concepts principle evidence and procedure this is the broad area which i am the doing about right the procedural substantive law and the uh, third law the adjective law right these are the three laws which you used to teach so first part in every law we need to discuss the law school teach to discuss the ideas concept and the principle second part the adjective law that is the evidence laws like evidence and other which have both combination of both the procedural and substantive and third is the procedural aspect of the law so these are the three learning outcomes which broadly can be divided but this is not the last you have to decide your course pedagogy and everything according to your course module ultimate objective of education is dissemination of knowledge of law right this is the ultimate target you can say goal or achievement you want to disseminate the knowledge of law to whom to how to why that is a different matter but this is the ultimate goal of this and for dissemination of this knowledge we requires various methods these methods will differ according to this what is that the development develop the strategy uh, sorry uh, develop the student ability to generate idea first method which we can adopt that should enhance the ability of the student 
to generate their own idea second we want to let them understand the use and application of this knowledge it means we are just going to give them the mere understanding what the concept of law second we are going to give them how to apply and how to use law next facilitate the professional skill and development that is the legal legal and this i am going to discuss which kind of skills is required i am going to discuss this is the way and next objective which we self learning ability very very important whenever you are going to see any professional education that is the basic difference between the traditional education and the professional education professional education always have one aim and that is to enhance the ability of the student that ability is the self learning ability right self learning ability enhancement is the one way or one object of the professional education and that is also true with the law next the values and ethics what is the difference between these two you will very easily available to understand when i am going to give you the difference between the teaching method in codified law or uncodified law so this is the basic in general discussion you can see that they are able to learn the self learning ability and the professional ethics profession is skills but what are the ethics and the values that has to be inculcated inculcated that is a again next object and last object of the law, legal education is evaluation so these are the six broader you can say broad broader aspects of the legal education which any law school would like to achieve aap sabko ye baat samajh mein aa rahi hai sab sun pa rahe hain koi mujhe hello yes ma'am yes ma'am is it clear yes ma'am okay yes ma'am yes ma'am yes, ma yes, ma please let me know ki ma'am yes, there is ma a need of it i will yes ma'am okay thank you so next thing that what is the nature of legal education as per the jurist as per the you can say different person there are two fold nature of the legal education one fa one view that favors that legal education is a liberal education and second view that favors that legal education should be treated as a professional education so what is the difference between legal education uh, sorry liberal liberal education and the professional ed education accordingly we are methodologically this is not the strat i i can uh, i can say that normally it is said that for uncodified law a teacher should adopt or teacher should uh, a teacher should see the nature of legal education as a liberal education if you are going to teach uncodified law which I, we are going to discuss further so this is a just view i cannot say that it is a true view but that is a view that whenever a teacher is supposed to teach uncodified law they must take legal education they must treat legal education as a liberal education what do you mean by liberal education liberal education required a strong sense of values what person can Uh, uh, give to the society what kind of contribution can be uh, given to the society what kind of contribution is possible what is second the civic engagement that is the object of the liberal education third is the social responsibility right and the human culture these are the few aspects which are the core uh, well uh, core features of the liberal education so education so what is required that whenever you are going to teach the uncodified law it means we would like to uh, we could like to disseminate those knowledge by which we can inculcate the value system the responsible citizens who are able to understand what is their responsibility towards the society what kind of human culture 
uh, they have to protect these are all the ultimate object of the liberal education and whenever you are going to teach uncodified law you must keep in the mind second view second way talks about the professional education right here what is required here learning te teaching application is required the service to the society but with the professional ethics so what is the difference between this ethics this values and this professional ethics just try to understand whenever you are going to teach the uncodified law for example if you are going to teach muslim law or maybe you are going to teach administrative law if you are going to teach administrative law you have to say what are the doctrine of uh, natural justice theories or what so what you are expecting from the judges that they must follow the general rule and that is the rule of natural justice but when you are teaching the codified law it means you are expecting the uh, expecting from the judges that they must follow the words of the act or the enactments or the if it, it could be a case of advocates and obviously they if it is a wrong you are going to save the criminals that is your professional ethics but uncodified will say no it is right it is wrong like this you have to decide first whether it is right if you are going to plead for a, a terrorist whether it is right or wrong this is what the uh, liberal education so whenever the teacher is going to teach the uncodified law i think he or she must be well versed with the value system of the societies then only they are uh, easily teach the such kind of now our focused area which we are going to discuss today that is a codified or uncodified law and especially the teaching pedagogy about the uncodified laws if i have just divided it into two parts it is a codified and that is a uncodified what is the difference between codified and uncodified law right codified laws are enacted but uncodified laws are normally evolved normally usually they are they are evolved so what is the difference i can i think all of you are able to understand if there is a specific process of par passing of a bill and after passing of that bill it is converted into an act and we can say it is now codified that is a difference same difference between the written constitution and the unwritten constitution will be easily known to everyone right why we are saying that there is a written constitution of the britain which is unwritten right it is just like an unenacted one not even a right example i can say that is part of enacted but not a could uh, in a uh, consolidated form there are history of various acts and that acts will be treated as the constitution of the britain but we have one codified um, consolidated uh, constitution so we can so this this is not the right example but yes it could be so it is very easily understood that codified means a prescribed process of passing of an act is uh, fulfilled and that act was pa passed but if it is uncodified it means it is recognized by the law but not codified again please try to understand it is recognized but not enacted if it is all together rejected not recognized by the law that is not the uncodified law too for example if you are saying some indigenous uh, way of thinking which is not accepted if it is immoral and it is not accepted by the recognized by the law then it is still not a codified so that is the basic difference normally what happen the chief source of codified laws are the legislation but the chief source of uncodified laws are the custom so those custom which are we are all know that valid custom it has to be valid and what is the essential validity everything we have already so after the chief source of 
unqualified laws are the custom and obviously the valid customs of law are the part and partial of uncodified law of the particular nation country the development right without development we cannot say this is the true because there is a change it is evolved but some codified law can be converted into codification or maybe become a law of the land by a judgments so this is the way so if there is a legislation and there is a new judgment that can be change law that codified law can be changed by the judgment and that is known as the development right uh, for example all of you are very well aware of the article 21 that if you are just going to read the verbatim of article 21 you are just seeing this and that is not suffice you need to have you have to have understanding about the various judgments and the developments in with the basic structure whatever you are talking about everything so this is what but if there is a uncodified law the development will be seen in a two ways one is the legislation and second is a judgment these are the few example i would i would like to put for for example we are just going to see the muslim law most of the uh, part of most of most part of the muslim law is a uncodified form that is known to everyone it is a uncodified form of law so muslim law but the very small portion of muslim law is already already enacted right the muslim women protection of rights on divorce act is sab ki knowledge mein hai that act was already enacted so that was uncodified law converted into codified and one uncodified is still uncodified but may is a very well uh, you can say certain become a certainty in law because the drawback of the uncodified law is a uncertainty right so that become a certain by second part the development of second part is a judgment and there are number of maybe shahabano you will talk or the sarabano recent judgment right triple talaq judgment so after that you are seeing the uncodified book is having that material still until and unless it is changed amended book will be there till that till day you are having that uncodified book in a form of just having this much that particular case is not there so you are not able to understand what is the real status of this uncodified law so basic understanding with this i am i would like to say that whenever any teacher is going to teach the uncodified law the biggest challenge was before the law it was not now a challenge right previously it was a big challenge why i am saying this because if something is already codified you are going to have one particular one book and you are having everything in this book but with the uncodified law when multiple textbooks were not available material on internet was not available at that time this uncodified law teaching was a big big challenge that teaching pedagogy was completely different at that time nowadays you are seeing a different kind of teaching pedagogy there is you can say uh, interwoven relationship between codified and uncodified law and accordingly your teaching should be changed so this is a basic understanding of codified and uncodified law no teacher can teach uncodified law with without the help of codified law or any codified law without understanding the uncodified law this is my understanding whenever i am going to teach something maybe i am going to teach uh, tpa if there is a ownership and possession concept and i have i have a basic understanding of ownership and possession under jurisprudence it is easier for me to correlate between these and then only you are able to uh give your presentation in a proper way that you are able to connect the two concept in the same uh law you uh, law system right yeah, maybe there are two different uh, there are number ways same with the if you are teaching crpc and you have not taught what is criminology 
or you are seeing ipc and penology that kind of correlation i don't think there is a requirement to discuss the if you are not able to understand that kind of correlation you cannot teach codified law or even you cannot teach codified law in a proper way so this kind of understanding you are teaching a state under the indian constitution right and the difference between the state given under the indian constitution the definition under article 12 and the state as per the jurisprudence or under the political science that kind of dis difference you need to teach to your understand uh, to your student for a better understanding right same with these are there are a number of example you are teaching evidence and you are not able to interpret your law which how to interpret the evidence is how to collaborate the evidence without you are not same with the human rights so these are the concept so my first and last this thing that whenever any teacher is trying to teach any subject may be a codified or a uncodified law they must have understanding of all the laws after brief understanding of codified and uncodified law we should understand this teaching methodology or we can say pedagogy or andragogy whatever you would like to use before accepting or before applying any teaching methodology i have already explained you i am not talking about the teaching methods here teaching methods are the part of teaching methodology right you can see here teaching methodology is covered all such parameters teaching methods are a very little part of the teaching methodology or pedagogy so what is that methodology you can you have to change as per the requirement why because no one can teach you how to teach right very important point which i would like to say to you even i cannot teach you please teach in this way please stick teach this matter no nobody why because if you are teaching in nliu or you are teaching in traditional university your complete methodology or pedagogy has to be changed otherwise you will not able to achieve the targeted object because in nliu you are having different kind of resources different language different capacity of the teachers so what we have to see whether we are here in the rural or urban university whether you are what how many resources you are having you are not having any internet for example recent day we have faced this problem in some schools which are charging high fees right they can conduct the online exam why because they know the audience the student who are with them are belonging to a very rich velvers family who are able to provide them the laptop or the mobile by which they can teach this when when we are seeing the traditional university we are having number of objection that our student or our learners are not having the mobile or internet facility because they are at present in the urban place they are there is no internet connection so you have to consider whether you can go for a online teaching in such a scenario no i cannot teach you how to teach in such sense so everybody should take their own recourse to Uh, adopt the um, pedagogy which they want to or andragogy which they want to. so what will affect the resources what you have the language obviously in hindi medium schools if you are in food just giving the english no it is very good and uh, it is uh, required it is compulsory you should teach in english you should speak in english it is not the right way because maybe one person is kerala he wants he is very much comfortable because ultimately teaching is what it is the relationship between the teacher and the taught the learners and the educators and this relationship obviously depend on the circumstances and the language could not be play a barrier so resources language that has to be seen whether you are adopting this the capacity 
one very good teacher is there but they are not having good learners they are from different different background they are having different you can say brought up their learning classes so how to teach in that so maybe sometimes learners are very good and you are not having good educators so these all are the factors which have to be considered before adopting any teaching methodology so whatever i am going to give you this is just i am going to make you think something then what you can do what should be done by a teacher in a law before doing any teaching so what methodology include first it include the educator second part is the learners right third is the content which we want to teach fourth are the resources which are we are using as an our tools and technique and fifth and last one is the method by which we are going to apply this so these are the complete methodology we can say teaching methodology yes evaluation processes included under this only method seven right? what teaching pedagogy involves and what i am going to discuss further these are the seven parameters but these three parameters i am going to give you the base obviously this is a statement which we have already discussed one is the teacher in turn parties who are the who are involved in teaching pedagogy first the parties second the law of learning very 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 important which i think is missing in legal teaching that is my personal view that law of learning should be taught to the should be taught to the teachers if they are not able to understanding the law of the learning they are unable to teach in a proper way third is the object of teaching fourth is the method of teaching these four parameter i am going to discuss in the detail but these three uh, parameters which are also involved in that uh, here i am just giving you i think that is very easy and need not to discuss further that's why i am just putting this clarified classroom environment all our teachers you all are teachers and able to understand what is the importance of classroom environment how discipline the audience what is your behavior with them right uh, whether some it may be one children is one child is there who is in trouble and complete class will be in a mash right so you have to see everything so what is your classroom environment first focus of the teacher should be how to discipline if you are shouting there if you are trying to uh, make unnecessary discipline that will again create a problem right afterward maybe you are thinking that i am so disciplined teacher but you will lose your interpersonal relationship with your student so that kind of interest how to make your class environment very uh, you can say learners uh, free your learners benefit second part is your content obviously normally contents are the curriculum if it is guided by the bci and you have to follow then it is something different maybe your board of study has already decided and you are just going to implement that so there maybe you are not having that much of autonomy but if you are having autonomy you can change your curriculum even though if you are not having that much of autonomy i am going to give you a example where you are employing one very important insertion method and you can divide ki which part of your curriculum is important you are going to give more emphasis on that and rest of the syllabus which you think is not of much important you can leave it or you can just give a glance of this so these are the things which have to be keep in the mind when teaching pedagogy is adopted resources obviously i think it is very easily understood to everyone how many tools library you are saying your student go and use this and you are knowing that this much this uh, these books are or this particular book is not available in your library or anywhere so how can you go to so resources is obviously a very important 
right answer. Again, I am going to give you these three, four parameters in detail because these are the very important thing which one you understand. First, I am just giving you the, uh, I can say, a global perspective about the teaching, general teaching, and then I will come to you because if you are able to understand what is lecture method, this, 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 then you are able to just if I am going to say you know in un uncodified law you should apply this method, it is very easily uh, understandable by you. You are able to understand that. So first, I am just giving you this kind of model. First, the parties, right? Obviously, teacher and the learners. Whether who are your learners? There is a PhD scholar. There is a three years law course and fifty years old person is before you. A very young eighteen years boy is in the BLB honors course or the LLM course. A different age group, different learning with experience. They are coming. These are the factors which have to be. So in parties, teachers and learners relationship. What is the body language of your student? I think that is the biggest drawback of this online system. For example, how many of you are getting bored? I'm not able to understand because of this barrier. I'm not able to see your faces. What is your reaction? Maybe someone is saying, oh, ma'am, yawning there. No, it's not good. Or you are bored. Right? So that body language you can see in the class your eye contact because that make them feel right the student that very good yes that teacher is giving me a more importance and that is a natural behavior of any person whenever you are going to respect or regard someone that is very very important role right so whenever you are going to teach because you are going to give something to them and they will accept that only when you are having that kind of body language that kind of confidence right emotions my personal opinion if you are i'm not talking about negative emotions if you are not emotionally connected with your learners that is useless no need to teach because emotionally, if you are not able to understand, somebody has lost their parents, their mother, brother, sister, so many times I personally feel at that time, if you are not able to support them, you cannot be a good teacher because not here you are going to teach something which is in a book. You are going to give you a life learn learning possibilities that they have to survive in their life. So your emotional connection, these kind of things has to be kept in the mind. A very good uh, proverb or you can say statement of the Einstein I would like to use. Doing a thing over and over again and expecting a different res result is a thing. Try to understand. If you daily and you are using a same method, same way of teaching. You are not changing. One day you are going for a group discussion. One day for a lecture method. Third day is a uh, presentation method. Then only something different you can expect from the student also. Because their learning ability is different. You have to adopt different methods. So this is very important point. As I told you, the second part. Right. First, we have seen the relationship, correlation between the interpersonal relationship between the teacher and the educator and the learners or the teacher and the students. This is the very important part where I would going to give a more and more focus. Because ultimately teaching is about the working on the human. So how a human mind works if a teacher is able to understand that how human mind works they are easily change their pedagogy right as per the demand of human students for example i am seeing that two hours i am going to continuously giving you a lecture 
and human demands want that every 40 minutes although that is a 30 minutes and some psychologists say it is a 40 minutes after 30 to 40 minutes your mind wants a different kind of setting pattern change and after seeing this complete exercise they have made that it should be a uh, teaching hour should be 40 minutes more right 10 minutes for different thing and for and uh, 30 minutes for class teaching but as that job was allotted to me i am doing but yes even though i will try that your mind will be work your needs should be satisfied according so what are those five c's which will clarify our the human mind what are the five c are we this is the i can say these are the five c with which our brain is wired connected how first is the choice right if you are not giving the free choice to the student as well as to the teachers if you are imposing no you have to talk this particular subject and you are thinking no this is not my interest area you will not teach it in better way right the first choice to the teacher that they should che- uh, select what is you, if they are maybe sometime you are not do that but you should try that you should choose the interest area then only you will perform in a better way same with the student if there are optional and elective nowadays you are seeing net and the ugc have enforced that kind of policy that you have to give the elective courses ca uh, right cbcs to pattern and you are facing this i think everyone is aware of this thing that elective subject has to be there so that they will take whether they are interested in human rights or business law this second human mind require the collaboration right why because we are the social creature normally we are seeing in this coronic pandemic right what we are facing that if person is inside the home there is no relation with the public or with the friends and they are feeling sad societal activities are increasing so being a social creature what person want that there will be a collaboration means you should give them an opportunity that they are going to give the seminar the workshop the presentation interaction between the two groups of the people these are the collaboration between you and the person these are the group discussion every model are the basis of this this is the basis for those models next c demands the human mind wants the communication and the expression if one or monologue is there only the teacher is saying no you should not say anything you are not allowed after completing my uh, lecture you can only ask the question if this kind of practice will be adopted by the teacher he cannot be teaching a good way there will be a there will be a communication between the student and the teacher so this is the very expression is very important everybody wants to express their feeling so let them express and that is the very important learning i am just teaching you the learning model right how to learn how to uh, this is these are the law of learning and there are five six models but i have just tried to teach two to three models for your this presentation critical thinking right this critical thinking demands more intellectual right if you are giving them just the data this is this this is this go for this and they need not to apply their mind then after few hours they are going to sleep let them feel that their mind is working their left and right brain are just saying no this is not right this is right this is not to be done this has to be done like this so your intellectual activities should be there and the creativity and uniqueness is also so these are the five c i think it is very easily understood to one person the teacher should try to understand this the second model of teaching learning model learning teaching or uh, learning model that is a bloom's taxonomy again we found we find that bloom's bloom's taxonomy very very basic concept of teaching is not 
taught to the law teachers and i think it should be uh, very matlab i can say ki it is very important part why i am saying this because bloom's taxonomy talks about the three h it means learning cannot be completed because without co relationship between these three the three has to work together then only learning is hello hello ma'am that was by mistake somebody is okay. mic is there any guidance for me everyone is okay yes ma'am fine thank you so bloom's taxonomy talking about the head heart and head how it is work together right learning requires these three h head your brain your heart means your emotions head means your physical activity and this is the bloom's taxonomy this is three h r my the same but this is what the bloom's taxonomy bloom taxonomy talks about first the cognition it means it's talking about the brain your social insight allow you to infer, interpret explain right your brain your critical thinking everything your brain means cognition second part affective means your emotional part which i am correlating with the heart right development of the attitude and the values what to do what not to do what is right what is wrong and third is your hand means your physical because even though something you have in your mind you are good emotion but if you are not able to express your thing then that is a psychometer means your physical act activities means your practical skill your physical your reaction toward right what is if somebody is in your i uh, before you and they are not giving you any expression physically maybe they are understanding everything maybe they are emotionally connect to you oh madam is teaching well but if their physical expression their vocational skill are not be expressive then you are not willing to teach them you are not ha having good sense okay, okay if everything is going well so this is what the bloom's taxonomy talks about so what is bloom's taxonomy in detail first i am just giving you a detail about the this cognitive one right like ki everything is very easy cognitive what is the cognitive in the year 1956 bloom's taxonomy came and in the year to uh, in 20th century in now they have given a second body right the first bloom's taxonomy it is in the form of noun and now the second bloom's taxonomy which they gave in the 20th, uh, 21st century that is in the form of words the first taxonomy in the form of noun just and try to understand first this is the stages right first basic stage of the cognitive is brain is your knowledge second stage is a comprehensive your correlation your uh, uh, try to understand you can say and after that there was a application of that knowledge after applying that knowledge you are able to analyze whether i did something wrong right it is a right way to do or not to do after analyzing right and wrong you are going to synthesize means your result is there your conclusion is there okay it's good and last one is a evaluation it means your examination system right so first you are trying to inculcate the knowledge after inculcating the knowledge you are going to let them understand what you exactly want to say here you can say you are just providing the data after they after providing data you are making them understand to uh, uh, understand the concept and basic thing after that you are trying to make them uh, apply application of that uh, uh, knowledge which you have provided them after providing apply after applying that they can able to understand what is correct way to apply that that is the analysis that is normally known as the mid term exam the assessment the continuous assessment process after that you are going to synthesize and their evaluation whether that knowledge was right or not a minor change was done with the i can say they have just changed that noun into the verb and what they did they converted knowledge obviously into remembering 
second comprehension they use the word understanding they use the word in the insight of application they use the word applying you are very easily this is i think uh, observable that uh, verbs are using analysis they are going to say analyzing a change which they brought in this they are saying synthesis is nothing means midway is nothing evaluating itself is a uh, midway and after evaluating them you are creating something new and that is a that is a basic difference the synthesis is a last now right this synth synthesis should not be seen in the midway that is the object of the bloom's taxonomy so what you are going to say this continuous evaluation process should be there one by one and after that the creating that they will be forwarded further or not so this is a bloom's taxonomy isko main aapko bahut zyada nahi bata rahi hu ye pura bata chuki hu keval aapko i would like to explain you here this two things one and then lots to hots that is what the bloom's taxonomy talks lower order thinking skill to higher order thinking skill and the teaching of the object of teaching of law should be this creation please remember this term your object may be school will do this much of the understanding level of knowledge is sufficient for the student who are in the school level teaching the school but if you are a student of graduation you have to analyze and apply but the creating is a last stage so normally it is said for legal education hots are required means higher order thinking skills should be taught to the student and that is what the requirement of bloom's taxonomy and we infer that we should come up with this much of higher level because we are teaching in a professional level so this much of not the requirement after bloom taxonomy second learning model in brief that is a thorndike models dekh rahe aap sabko ye you are able to see that right thorndike's model very very important and very popular model for this because uh, it gives you a very descriptive analysis what to do and uh, what to do and at what time in the process of learning you should do this right before starting any adopting any methods of teaching you have to abide by these rule you have to learn this rule so they divided that from thorndike and uh, divided it into two parts primary rules of learning and secondary law of learning what is primary law of learning primary law of learning having these three parameters first law of readiness or law of motivation right the physical mental and emotional implication on teacher it means the readiness of the teacher the curiosity and the interest of the student for example you have to apply for right maybe you are coming for this particular fdp and for this fdp they have called you that this is the application form if you are interested if you are curious about to learn you should apply otherwise it's not required same with this readiness of both the part is the law of first step of first law of learning is law of readiness and motivation you have to motivate the student okay you should take part and you will get something maybe there is a need and second law of learning says the exercise in the practice right repeatedly law reasoning like maths please remember this very important thing use of language in law is very important what language you are using language here means the uh, you can say specific words of the law very concepts right for example you are using the habeas corpus all it is not common for all so legal exercise and practice is very important that is the repetitivity if you want that everybody should understand this is the basic concept without basic structure is a basic concept right rule of law is what separation of power is law so many time that was repeated that it is in your mind because it is reasoning thinking 
right so this is what the law of language you know, exercise in the practice so which are the important term which are the important concept you have to repeat repeat and repeat learning law of use and disuse very important what to learn and what not to learn the basic confusion amongst the learner is how to use that knowledge and how to disuse what should be learned and what not to be normally you are seeing this a student come to you ma'am whether the subject is good for me or no ma'am i should go for this subject or not to go for this what is the important in this subject what is the essential we should learn so this is the use and disuse knowledge even the teacher and the learner so here we are just talking about the learning principle with the object of learner's objective right so this is what law of effect this is third the pleasure on pain theory of everybody very well versed yeah bentham pain and pleasure this is what we are going to apply in the learning pattern if that fellow that learner is satisfied then only that person will want to do that once you are taught by someone and you think okay that teacher is good i am satisfied with her or his teaching methodology then what you will do again and again you would like to come and join the lecture if you are not satisfied you would not like to first you have to see and for this pain and pleasure what you are going to see you also have one more what it first it has to be enjoyable teaching second reward and punishment method of learning it means you have to give them you are in merit you are fail if you are a merit holder you have given them the gold medal if they are fail then they have to again repeat that these kind of uh, theories are known as the reward and punishment and during maybe it is a last resort is that right after examination they are going to have this merit and fail but during your complete session you can reward them with something right before in the schools you have seen there is a star in the cheeks of the children right because they are just trying to motivate these are the few example which these are so i can say these are the four primary law of learning given by the donkeys and one teacher to keep in mind uh, these are the eight law of learnings maybe bahut repeat ho raha hai so i don't understand but yes i will try again second law of learning requires law of recency right maybe you are every day life you are using this recency means revision just before the example this is very good example recent act are lasting this is the concept that whenever you are going to revise the syllabus the very important topics which you think are good for the student at that time in the point of view of the examination system you should because recent last recent recent acts are lasting so you should revise those topic and that is the reason we use to have that kind of practice revision in the system second law is a law of primary just opposite to this but again very good right that is beginning is best and lasting last lasting as well as theek hai na hum hamesha kya padhte hain ki फर्स्ट जो है वो देखा हुआ इफेक्ट हमेशा आपके ऊपर रहता है सेम थिंग इज देयर व्हेन यू आर स्टार्टिंग समथिंग अर्ली ईयर ऑफ लॉज देन यू आर प्रोवाइडिंग देम व्हाट दिस काइंड ऑफ बेसिक कांसेप्ट फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू आर गोइंग टू टीच जुरिस्प्रूडेंस इन देयर थर्ड एंड फोर्थ ईयर नॉर्मली पीपल से मैम व्हाई जुरिस्प्रूडेंस इन द फर्स्ट एंड सेकंड ईयर व्हाई नॉट इट इज इन थर्ड ईयर बिकॉज़ नॉर्मली स्टूडेंट्स आर नॉट वेरी Uh, interested in this uh, it is very monotonous subject which is philosophical and not to easily understand it. but that is the reason because if you are giving them the best and the basic concept in the early stage it is easier for them to recall and rewind and apply them in a future third law is the intensity of stimulus it is just this example i am repeating if you are going for a competitive exam like this what you want this intensity of stimulus exam is there maybe you are studying whole year but just before the examination there is a stimulus 
and that stimulus with the intensity that tomorrow i am having my exam every concept which you were not able to understand before that day you are able to understand what happened nothing that is the intensity of stimulus so whenever you are having exams of them they just try to give them a difficult difficult things so that uh, in the pressure of exam they are easily try to understand and they are very focused on the topic what they have to learn so these are the few practice which a uh, teacher should opt love belongingness what is this you partners belongingness itself says it means the nature of environment is like that that they will feel yes connected with the services for example if you are giving a uh, some example of their parents oh your parents is there and i am talking or i am teaching you the doctrine of pleasure in the constitution of india 310 or 311 and your parent is there in that and Uh, he is working. What kind of uh, remedy he can gain? What kind of? If you are trying to connect them with the society, their own example. For example, now I am teaching you that this is exam of exam pressure and all. So in this way, they are feeling. Oh, that is what I know very well. So that is very easy for them that they feel I am belonging. Belongingness is important. Set and attitudes. love sets and attitudes demand that you must punish them a little bit of setbacks and attitudes are very required if you are giving them always praise praise and praising is there they will not try to enhance their thing they will not try to improve a lot so that is multiple responses this is again what happened multiple responses will make you to choose the correct option right what happened you are uh, uh, you are appearing for an exam first year a student wrote in first paper they wrote just for three pages one answer of three pages second year they learn no they she or he writes five to six pages that is what they again there is a response again there will be in third and after getting so much of response they will able to understand now i have to write 10 to 8 pages of response that are the multiple responses what are required so we have to keep in mind partial activities learner has capital to uh, capacity to select important from irrelevant maybe you are not saying in this subject this is important you try to uh, teach them everything but you are uh, bound to say i can say that is the nature of the teacher that you are going to give them that this is the activity which is very very important and information is the topics are very important so you are going to give them the partial activities right the leave the relevant and choose the correct information that is known as the partial activities law of the learning and last is the analogy very frequently we use this new situation person try to respond like old response that teacher right similar situation and what we write we try to we try to apply the same model which we have adopted right before you have just touch a hot iron after that you will not touch your response will be always no you will just keep the hand back no no it's hot so how it is first response at the before response will be adopted by so what person will do they will respond like the old responses right so if you have already teach them the codified law they then we what they will do they will try to understand that oh uncodified law should be teach in the same fashion but what you should do you should try to give them the understanding no there is the difference this codified law demands you the clinical application may be that required a different kind of application of law so you have to Uh, prepare them for the analogy or the correlation between these two what are the influencing influencing factor methods of the teaching 
university teaching except the appropriate for all the courses right right no method you cannot adopt any method but factors which we can connect in the teaching is human factor objective of teaching subject area and times and the material in after seeing this you can say for example here we are going to see the uncodified law so just i am coming to the uncodified law of the section what is expected as uh, we are going to teach the uncodified law so in broader perspective we may if we have to understand that what are the goals of legal education and accordingly we can change our teaching so the goal of legal education first is the academic education means just the fundamental of the law we want to obtain second we want to make them aware about the professionally trained person means they must understand their social and professional activity. and third is that training legal outstanding means their lawyering skill that is what the essential is so these are the parameter goals which Uh, even we have to keep in mind when we are going to teach the uncodified law of teaching broadly if you want to divide in a teaching method it is of four kind first known as a telling method second known as the doing method third is a visual method and fourth is a mental method very at uh, its name itself reflect name itself reflects telling method means your lecture discussion you are saying something logical and sequent presentation is a story telling lecture discussion for example only right doing method means you are giving them the work to do that is a problem solving project everything visual method you are going to give them the demonstration slide demonstration nowadays documentaries normally you give that this is a uh, case of this is a film this is a movie of this and you can demonstrate and after that you are trying to correlate this nanavati case movie is there and you want to correlate whether that was evidence was correct or this evidence which i am going to teach you is uh, how it is correlated with the nanavati so these are the few things which you want to do visual method or you can adopt the mental method it is always better to adopt all the the mental method means that brainstorming of the learners their analysis and logical reasoning abilities right so these are the things which methodology we can this are the changing practices so i am denoting from to from so to to where we are going previously the form of law teaching was the behaviorist view now the constructive and the development view was adopted right constructive means something which is going to help them in their future that is all here we just want to see the behaviorist what is their behavior what they want to learn that is all teacher centered approach teacher centered approach was previously adopted only the lecture method and that was adopted now we are going towards the student centric approach more and more students oriented approach are used and what are those which we will going to discuss from giving the theories the concept from to we are going towards the combination of theories and the practice model and from non technical to we are going for that technical model of teaching so these are the basic changing trends in the legal education what else we can see in change the time of this old time lecture method was supplemented by case study method in the year 19 normally i used to uh, see or heard about this that uh, Okay, I am using case study method, and they feel that we are using something new. No, it is not so. Just see this, nineteen hundred eleven. So old method is this, right? So we have to clarify this. This technical legal problem solving skill. It is again a old method that was known as the primary goal, right? This is a Australian method. Again, a very old model. Problem solving skill is not the new model for you. it is a 1979 model same these are the few example i am just giving you so that you can understand that uh, 
models which you are article writing model right article teaching model that is again our jeremy frank in 1993 these are the few models we can say adopted by the teachers and even i am just talking about the legal education and that is for use the style of teaching obviously the teacher centered and the student centered approach in law teaching normally known as the autocratic style of teaching and permissive style of teaching autocratic style of teaching then right, the teachers are more active and more emphasis i think i do want to repeat that you are knowing this demonstration tutorial lecture method are this autocratic style of teaching and permissive style is where the both teacher and the student remains active and lay emphasis in student emphasis you can see more pro towards the and they also talks about the applicability and the empirical model of pre teaching that is clinical case study that is a empirical these are the two style of teaching these are the teaching method which i have given you the uh, mostly teaching method first is that teacher centered second is a pupil centered inside the case class second one is a pupil centered but social classroom right which we are seminars symposia and that, that that is what the pupil centered and last one the use of the instruction means the program instruction and everything is pupil centered so first method which discuss the methods of teaching two part we have already discussed this that the fun, first is the teacher centric and second is the learner centric approach all the models will be good for uncodified laws but what will be good what is to be teach that i am going to discuss for example i think i personally think a storytelling here i only i am going to give you because repetition will be there so i am just going to give you a discussion storytelling is very good method of teaching for uncodified law why i am telling you because normally we discuss that it is a what a historical right if you are giving them an example you are giving them a story because we are seeing the uncodified laws are developed and during the development there are number of stories if you are going to for example telling muslim law when you are saying oh kias was this right why it the term kias because it is a uh, telling they are just applying that uh, previous quran and hidal hadith and they try to uh, just tentative explanation of that and that is a kias you are going to and that was arabic word and everything so after seeing yeah if you can say that who was the muhammad pagambar and this 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 or you are saying the story of the austin what was his uh, Uh, module uh, these these everything will give them the example oh that is what we want to do so these are the storytelling model is very good lecture is obvious we are going to discuss demonstrate yes. this is again very good biograph if you are going to teach the student that what were the juristic opinion and what were the hardship faced by that proponent before proponent right for example you are saying kills kelson and after saying kelson you are saying no that was opposed by this if you are saying austin said this and their biography who was the fa father who was the teacher and that kind of relationship that will always be in their mind because after getting the biographical understanding that what was the scenario what was the germany model uh, what why american thoughts came because biologically uh, that law that these are the few things justice home's concept you are teaching and if you are giving them the biography of justice home that why and how because he was he himself was a justice so obviously he will come up with the justice thoughts so that is very easy for them to understand the biological uh, study biological way should be there historical and development obviously just like history a story historical development i'll also give you the brief this team teaching normally we miss that in some and uh, hello in some 
in some national laws you are seeing because monotonous normally a law will a law teaching will have uh, there is a possibility that teaching will be monotonous if one teacher is saying and that is not codified if something is already given it is a codified law everything is written and you are just going to explain so it is easy for but every person has different connotation different concept different understanding for the same concept especially in the case of uncodified law so team teaching will be a very good model for the academic work these are the learner centric i have already said detail i am going to give you a detail model these are the learner centric approach and that are the socially learner centric approach so this is the what people centric approach is this heuristic model which i am going to give you in a detail this thing because when i am going to give you explain the uh, use of heuristic model in the uh, uh, uncodified law project methods discussion method assignment method i don't think it is required to give in a detail because uh, my opinion you are able to understand every teacher what is the project what is the discussion assignment but these are the model which are used in the people centric these are the people <coughs> socialization technique normally in law we use the role play model <coughs> this is all seminars symposium workshop very common phenomena panel discussion is there diverse topic with uh, views of the diverse but the role play model is a very good model which can be used in normally we think that in uncodified law we are not going to use the role play model but my view is that maybe you can have a, a problem from the uncodified law and giving you for a mock trial rather than mock code it could not be good for mock code but role playing in a mock trial who is the police that is the person who is saving the uh, case of uh, triple talaq like this or any 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 polygamy is a problem and you are giving them a mock trial like this the role playing could be the good model for these are the few uh, central general law teaching practices that centered education model rather than the skilled oriented model these are the i can say problem they are just trying to accept the concept and the theories illustrate and underline the key point by commentary and analyzing the deductive reasoning choose a typical case especially new and argument these are the few style i don't it's okay here i would like to explain this everything right one click google will access to any knowledge right information is available what we are supposed to do as an instructor we try to make them understand what google is saying how so we have to go two step ahead from the google what are the two steps first new perspective for example everybody knows about the hierarchy of court that is a supreme court that is a high court that is a district court nothing new in that right the vertical horizontal uh, sorry vertical hierarchy of the court is very easily known to everyone that one is going first go to the district court and there again a modern magistrate so and so then high court and the supreme court nothing new it is available in google what teacher is supposed to give that what is the horizontal hierarchy of the benches in the high court and the supreme court normally students are not able to understand how many kinds of benches there are five kinds of horizontal benches right first is the single bench then the double bench then the constitutional bench that is known as as you are a teacher you are very well versed five benches then there is a higher bench then there will be a full bench and what does full bench means only not the appointed only the uh, only the appointed judge or appointed sitting judges will constitute the full bench you have to say right that vacant seats of the judges will not be considered or it will be what will be considered to constitute a full bench when the case is uh, if it is already decided by the uh, 
constitutional bench, five gen bench, then what will be happen if there is a seven bench decision already in existence and new court wants to change that? Then what will be the case? How they will send this seven bench again? Maybe in the nineteen. Uh, 99 there is a bench who gave a verdict that is a bench of seven judges and in 2020 they want to change the same verdict they want to overrule the previous case what they are supposed to do whether they have that much of authority to change them no they cannot change what to do they have to apply to the chief justice of india and after getting permission that this bench seven judges bench should be translated or transferred into the uh, constituted into the re, uh, constituted into the 9 11 or higher benches then only they can overrule the previous judgment these are the basic things which we are supposed to give them not the basic general thing same with this whether for example a student are getting data from the internet that rate of cyber crime is increasing okay then they have the data and they are putting you a very good setting ma'am this is i am just putting you the ncrb data data that says this okay well done dear you did well and now you have to ask them it is real increasing in the rate of the crime or just because of the awareness only registration of the crime increased whether it is a true picture maybe because of the rape case of damini there is awareness among the public and they are going for the more uh, filing of this uh, fir and because of then you are getting this data in hands what is the true picture so these are the basic things which a teacher supposed to discuss three t five c three h i think you are remembering all these now the three integration especially for uncodified law that is my personal this thing three d's fun three part of the legal education will be better prepared for a professional demand as for a specially code uncodified it is uncodified doctrinal methods of teaching study where you are going to give them a knowledge about the doctrine and analysis second you have to give them the documentation and debate your lawyering is skill for this next you are going to give them a decency very important part of uncodified law why because here you want to give them a value what is the value that is right uncodified law demands extraordinary sensitive person toward the society please remember this the object of uncodified law is not is not just to prepare the advocate not to prepare a professional with a, a good salaries no no it is not so the logic of uncodified law is to put to understand them what are the basic you can say the canvas of the society what are the law which are developed by from the customs and is still not codified and are become the challenge for the lawmakers they are unable to codify unify civil code what's the reason that is still uncodified reason reason is your society the canvas of the society demands something ends and because of that it is still uncodified muslim law it is still uncodified most of the part of it law you are thinking it is there it is still uncodified same with the juristic because it is a evolved area even you and me can create something new about the jurisprudence so it cannot be codified so these are the aspects which required are extra sensitive person for uh, this understanding of codified so this is what the decency what i am taking that is what the very important time. what you are able to see anyone is able to see this jerk technology yes ma'am so this yeah. means 
whenever you are teaching something and you are finding that everybody is going to sleep because now it is monotonous they are not giving the proper opportunity that they can express their views so what happened you do this something you cut something you just oppose it wrote the world in a and everybody will be if i am not going to explain something for few minutes you will think oh madam has did something wrong in this no it is not so that is just to try the attention of the student whenever you think just and jerk in any form here i am just using the jerk in this form because i am going with this uh, online methodology of teaching so this kind a jerk in any form you can get right so uh, this kind of jerk technology is very good for uh, uncodified you know what else list is this is not the i am just giving few example of this this is not the final these things to be remembered that uncodified law can be taught with these method maybe you are going to have the concept mapping you are going to lecture an amorphous method critical method article writing method comprehensive method socratic method of teaching sophist method of teaching heuristic method of teaching these very good methods for and after that if you are going to give them the practical knowledge these are the good for the concept side and if you are going to give them the different knowledge then uh, for their practical uh, then you can use the clinical stimulation model i am not using the here clinical uh, teaching Cl clinical method is different clinical stimulation is there infusion method very good method discussion seminar brain storming case study problem solving audio visual i think most of them are very easily understood by the teachers so i have chosen few methods for example at a normal first yeah socratic sophisticated which are not very well versed uh, with which all of you are not very well versed so i am going to just dis discuss this not the problem solving as i think ye all of you are very well what is the case study seminar that is the method which i am not going to give you are a discuss going to discuss in a detail so i am giving you the few a uh, teaching methodology which can be used by a school uh, teacher in a teacher first is a lecture method but what is required to teach in lecture general lecture and lecture for codified laws a different uh, connotation a different uh, parameters different objectives so what is that first obviously contents are very important why because in codified law you or the learner will have a list of content in a very chronological very uh, systematic way with this section says this this article says this but when you are going to teach the uncodified law the content should be very good because every book has different content in some aspect because it is still uncodified so different concept and different content will be there so content part has to be very very important part when you are going to teach the codified law the geography history biography sociology economic other other political science i am not going to give you the interdisciplinary interlinkage between the law and the society has to be given if you are giving them the geography then they are very easily able to understand which kind of um, you, you are saying that uh, i am talking about the analytical positivism and you are not giving them that analytical positivism is whether applicable in india and in which cases in which area you can say how can you link that this analytical positivism theory was already existing in india or was pers pers uh, per persisted so these are the things you have to discuss bibliography na movement of truth very why i am saying this because uncodified law are still uncodified because of few reason which i have already discussed right because maybe public at large is not ready to have that law codification of law is rejected by the public as i give you an example or uncodified law is there but truth is something different polygamy is in existence triple talaq is there was there so you have to say maybe it is that but what was the reason what was the quran says what was the what are the, these are the
truth you have to clarify them because who maybe there is a possibility that some books are not going to give them the truth the reality of that uncodification you have to give the truth to them kishan and when very example i try to give because uh, i think everybody is very well versed with everybody knows what is the kishan and bhakti and everyone knows what is the basic structure concept given by the kishan and bhakti we know what, i mean it is related to amendment we know it is related to preamble of the constitution it is talking about the rule of law sufficient everything but normally people left with the facts what was the reason that a land reform case a three land reforms issues was clubbed together who was the keshavan and bharti what was the reason for clubbing that reforms into the amendment how they are correlated with the amendments most of the time when i used to teach i saw that people have studied complete constitution they are knowing madam this is what kishan and bharti talks about and okay just let me know about the facts what were the facts and they are just they are unable to explain and that's the reason they are unable to explain you the relationship between the wages act the land reform act how it is correlated with the amendment and how the core amendment is related to your fundamental right and that talks about the basic structure what is that so this is what the content and the truth of the reality which has to be discussed to the teacher that is a, obviously you are going to adopt the lecture method but within that what should be discussed that is my second method which should be which is i can say useful for the uncodified law teaching that is the anamorphous method logic what is anamorphous methodology you are very well versed with this i think you have applied this so many time you are trying to give the live example right that is the anamorphous so first look very disoriented and curious there are a number of points 1 2 3 these are the points murder was happened ye yeah, this is this 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 and this glass was found for example so these are the various dotted and these dots are creating disorientation or chaos amongst the student or amongst the police officer whatever the case may be and you are trying to connect those dots and you will find some clear image emerging from these dots and this is what the anamorphous methodology adopted so when teachers are teaching the uncodified law they are trying to bring sense into the chaos right so chaos is always amongst the student obviously they are not very well understood what is this what is not that so the various concept they are difficult to explain so there you can use the anamorphous anamorphous uh, way of teaching is what for example this is a glass of water and everybody is uh, oh one the positive thing is it is a half filled a negative will say half uh, empty like that like this this right? it is not or some another point of view could be half air and half water is there and that's why it is again full right full the concept of full is but when there is a student if it is a science student if a, uh, the person who is from different he can see it in a different light that is that that this is a transparent thing one thing and if there is a something which can be seen yeah you can see from this to there side one person can say there is a adaptability nature of the uh, water or the transformative nature of the water and it could be solidified and vaporized another object you are here giving them one one very live example to explain ki this is what this fellow is saying here uh, rausko pound is saying this that uh, interest theory is said where uh, this uh, hearing is like this so different different aspect the same thing in a different way right so next you are saying ki if there is a fingerprint expert he will say the hot or cold water touching is very important whether it was a hot that could be so 
for judges and lawyer aspect you have to see the anamorphous methodology by giving them the student a very live example that why the uh, judgments are different from one to second why goloknath was this and why the keshanand bharti was this what was the change in mankind these are the various things so this is the very live example and you can explain them what is the anamorphous methodology so there if there is a cause that this jurist is saying something this is something same and you are again saying they all belong to the analytical school how can they the kelson is saying something a bentham is saying, how so that is the few example by which you can after lecture and anamorphous model we can see this article writing i personally think article analysis or the textbook reading could be a very good for this is my personal unqualified knowledge if you are reading something it is not special if you are giving them the research paper and the law article because under uncodified law you are not having a systematic model ki this is this this what happen if you are providing the student with the article or the research paper the opinion of a very expert you can say expert opinion reflected in this article or research paper will be very much important for especially the case of uncodified law and that will serve a tool for them oh that could be a different perspective with which they can learn but it is important that they must read the article in the seriously and carefully after careful reading you can they can student may first point out that what they are not able to understand if they say no oh, ma'am it is clear to us we are able to understand this research paper what that says it's okay if they say no these are the points it is difficult for them then teacher should answer the question and guide them okay this is what teacher will need to record and respond why they because everybody has different maybe one person have different problem in this second have different and after clarifying all the parameters all the aspects which problem and the queries accordingly responding then they will interpret the statute first they have read this research paper and now they will interpret the act or statute and the you can take say the textbook or if they have different statute and you all try to uh, correlate you are teaching them the criminology and you want them to understand the uh, this uh, ipc some topic or you are teaching teaching them the penology and you want to, what kind of punishment what is reformative punishment Uh, that talks about in what the reformative punishment you are saying in ipc so you can respond these are the so catch the keywords what are important these are the way of writing a way of teaching for the uncodified law this is again the same approach but what is possible they can understand apply and operate the knowledge of law the basic concept theory and legal system they are able to understand will improve the student what again what mo more important they are able to understand but they are able to analyze by themselves Be because you have given them first you should understand then i will explain so develop the case <coughs> and after getting all the solution teacher student should go discuss is uh, discussed in the together uh, this is a socratic method and socratic method says it is i can just reflect it is a question answer method you can say 2000 year back it was evolved and that is a way by asking the question you can just uh, just like a uh, jerk technology you can say that is a way uh, that whether your students are attentive they are listening something or not so you can ask the question by this and uh, the uh, green has started a digitization of socratic model and they are preparing a few question now you are having this question um, library and all that is was the the socratic model requires the sophist models that is require the public opinion you can say right sophist model uh, this is my personal view public opinion i wrote this sophist method uh, it is a greek model right where sophias and sophos meaning wisdom or wise is a meaning of sophist and they have explained their knowledge 
and this knowledge was explaining what the exercise and virtue are predominant to young statement nobility it means whenever there is a law and what is the public opinion about that particular law is very important so what you can do you can discuss particular problem that this is a problem go and discuss with your parents your colleagues your student your teachers any and come up with the solution what is their opinion about it that this is a again a public opinion view on this heuristic model is a self learning model you can say why it is hence means a hence in the student because it is a rhetoric public speaking was done in the heuristic understanding and discovering of the argument for the particular situation any particular situation and you want to discover and develop arguments right self learning they themselves heuristic model uh, want it is a greek model here it needs a find and discover from yourself having a problem learning and discovering something heuristic model is a uh, you can say by which student learn by themselves and that is a trial that is also known as a trial and error method first let them understand by their self and then you are going to explain that later on clinical stimulation is an approach obviously what is there clinical stimulation is different from the clinical a little bit difference between a clinical student normally what is clinic clinic is a medical Uh, treatment right normally that is a health center that is a clinic clinic means the previous stage where you are just going to uh, explain uh, just going to see the doctor that this is the problem i am facing if doctor will feel okay that is a very difficult case and go to the health center and go to the hospital then you will go there same with the clinical stimulation model here student learn the ethics that what kind of legal aid can be provided to the society here i am talking about general law lok adalat and everything but just the legal aid a very important a very uh, i think the stimulus for the student that oh how can i contribute to the society so this is a very important why i am saying this for example in uncodified law what we see that there is no prescribed process for the filing of cases and if you are able to stimulate your student that you can go for the pil this is a public interest requirement to go for the environment issue to go for some anything for example abhi uh, so many cases you have seen this hindu temple or whatever then you what is required you are just going to stimulate that these are the issues and you can go to the court in for the justice so doing method also this known as the stimulus clinical it is a infusion method uh, just it work very easily you can understand that is teaching for thinking and teaching uh, teaching of thinking and teacher for thinking what is infusion method what it does what you there are a uh, pages student right they all are from affinity group in a similar group in a right in a class you are there and you want to know you want to clarify that there is a confusion among the student where to go whether we are going for a public interest ngo and this kind of work or we want to go for a big firm to join the uh, money or just like gender issue age like this so what you are going to you are going to teach them what is teaching of thinking and what is teaching for thinking so these are the two parameter now you choose if you are going for this this way you will get this 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 if you are going for this then you will so here what in teaching that is a, a professional this thing but if you are going for a uh, uncodified not here i am giving you an example right of muslim women right shaira and the sabrimala whatever so you can teach them these are the all ip uh, pil so you are infusing them whether they can go for this or what kind of methodology so this is the infusion you are going to clarify the thoughts this is the general thing i don't want to discuss because uh, due to the positive time due to the positive time i think uh, these few things that uh, technological changes are there critical thinking is required very important contemporary issues discussion is uh, very important in this kind professional ethics and social responsibility should be uh, given to the student whenever you are teaching them the uncodified law because uh, during codification of uh, teaching codified law you are not able to give that kind of sensitization of the society is very important social justice
so these are the things which we yeah, these are the few recommendations i think you will see that uh, that these are the uh, in legal field these three uh, six, 26 fundamental law skills given by the mccart reports are very popular okay, what are the skill and to develop these skills we should teach national law commission again want something new to be done what i justice oriented education focused Law Commission reports have given a different fundamental lawyer skills. They focused on this. Different different committees and different different recommendation. You can see what kind of expectation from the teachers. Weakness of the contemporary education. Are, we are still getting this kind of uh, spoon feeding overly dependent on the teachers clinical method uh, to follow the teaching uh, clinical method is difficult for few schools limited time is available to complete the course uh, culture of the research is especially missing even the teachers don't want to study much for teaching so culture of teaching is missing in teachers that is again uh, these are the few more challenges i don't think how to badly date, synthesize, and collaborate the law. So these are the few challenges. You can see the slides. Again, challenges. Challenges, especially for this uh, uh, un uh, uncodified law, is to teach them difference between ethics and the legal ethics. Like legal ethics here demands the uh, advocate skill, professional ethics, BCI rules. You know, advocate general. What are the legal ethics? But ethics are different from the ethics, legal ethics. Right? So your general ethics and legal ethics, and that is very clear that nobody can teach people to be ethical. That is their personal concept. So in uh, teaching uncodified law, what the biggest challenge teacher face to clarify that that is the legal ethics, that is the ethics, and we want you to understand the ethics rather than just focus on the ethic, uh, legal ethics or the professional ethics. That is the biggest challenge. Uh, what you should include your in your teaching. So these should be first joint productive activity. Language development is very important in your curriculum. Con conceptualization, contextualization, context, how to create, connecting study to your students' life is very important. Changing activities, challenging activities, you have to, the how to complex thinking has to be created. Or uh, introduction conversion. These, if you want to see that whether you have teach in a proper way, right, you have to uh, take deep dive with this self check that right? these are done by you or not. What and what to not to do? <laughs> I think uh, you know it, right? And uh, by saying that, that a good teacher not only knows the way but shows the way for the teachers and with this i would like to conclude my presentation thank you thank you very much thank you so much ma'am thank you so much ma'am i would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to professor dr mona purohit for sparing her precious time with us it was really an informative and enriching session ma'am once again i would like to thank you on behalf of the organizers that is Ishwar Saran PG College, University of Allahabad, and uh, Deutsche Pinel Group. Thank you for such a wonderful session, ma'am. Thank you thank so much. You. Thank you so much. May I leave? Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am.